My name is Andy Stickle, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you 50 law firm marketing tips that you can use today to start making more money for your law firm. Now, before we get started, just so you know who I am, I uh, my name is Andy Stickle. As I said, I am Chief Marketing Officer of SMB Team. We have approximately 450 law firms that we handle their marketing for. Uh, we do coaching. We do all that type of stuff. So I'm always researching the latest tips, tricks, and hacks to grow law firms. And for the last 10 years, last actually it's been 12 years, last 12 years, that's what I've been doing. I've been helping lawyers grow their law firms, and I've literally helped thousands of lawyers do exactly that. So in this video, I'm going to give you my 50 best tips, tricks, and hacks that you can use to start growing your law firm today. And I promise you there's going to be something in here that you will be able to implement today that will make you more money. So let's get started. Now, my first tip is that you need to think about who it is that you're actually targeting. What I always tell lawyers is that people hire you. Cases don't hire you. So what you need to do when you're creating your content and you're creating your marketing messages, you need to think about who is it that you're actually targeting and what is it that they actually want. So for example, recently we were working on a traumatic brain injury campaign and I was talking to the attorney and I was saying, well, who is it that actually hires you? And it's not traumatic brain injury cases that hire them, right? And it's usually not the victim of the traumatic brain injury. It's typically the family member of the traumatic brain injury victim that hires this particular attorney. So I said, okay, well, if that's who hires you, then why are you creating all your content for all these people that don't hire you? So what we did instead is we started creating content centering around the things that the family members were actually interested in. What are the resources that are available? How do we make sure that their loved one is safe? How do we make sure that uh, you know all the problems that the family members are having, how can we address them and solve those problems? And when we did that, he started getting lots and lots and lots of clients, right? So what you have to remember, the first thing you always have to do with any marketing campaign is always think about who am I actually targeting? Because it doesn't matter if you're B2B or B2C. People are the ones that make decisions. AI is not there yet, right? So uh, people are the ones. So what you always have to think about, the first question you should always ask is who am I targeting? Who am I targeting? And then once you have that, then you can create content that is actually going to uh, address the problems that they have, which is immediately going to bring them closer to you. So the next tip, is take the airplane test. Now, what's the airplane test? Well, a couple of years ago, my wife and I went to Cancun. We went for our anniversary, and I don't speak Spanish, and I'd never been out of the country before, so I booked a travel agent. I called a travel agent. I said, hey, look, we want to go on vacation. We want to uh, go on this you know, amazing vacation. Can you please help us find somewhere? So the travel agent said, yes, I'll help you find somewhere. So a couple of days later, the travel agent came back. She had this whole presentation for us. She was like, okay, this is the resort that you guys need to go to. This place is amazing. It's right on the beach. You have your own butler. Your uh, room has its own plunge pool. They have like seven restaurants. It's all you can eat. Uh, food, drinks, alcohol, everything's included. There's no kids. We have three kids. So uh, a, a break from kids is a, is a welcome vacation for us. Um, you know, you go out to the beach, you get your own cabana. They, they serve you food and drinks on the beach, all that stuff. It was, it, it was absolutely amazing. But there's one thing she didn't tell us about, one single thing that she didn't tell us about. And maybe you picked up on it and maybe you didn't. But the thing she didn't tell us about was the airplane ride. And the reason why is because nobody wants the airplane ride. The airplane ride sucks. Nobody wants to get to the airport, airport two hours early, go through TSA, take your shoes off, take your belt off, get in line, get on the plane, you know, be on the plane for three hours and then go through customs in another country. <laughs> like You don't want to do any of that stuff. All you want is the destination. So what you need to think about is your clients want the destination. They don't want the vehicle that takes them there. Your service is the vehicle. Your service is the airplane ride. For example, nobody wants a divorce. What they want is they want freedom from their spouse. They want to start a new life. They want to have time with their kids and have a relationship with their kids, but they don't want the divorce. The divorce is the thing that takes them to the destination. Nobody wants a bankruptcy. Nobody wants to just file for bankruptcy just for the, just for the fun of filing for bankruptcy. What they want is they want freedom from their debt. They want peace of mind. They want the bill collectors to stop calling. The bankruptcy is the vehicle that takes them to the destination, that takes them to the resort. So if you start thinking about this, if you start thinking about, 
in all of your marketing, in all of your messaging, during your consultations, ask yourself, am I selling the airplane ride or am I selling the resort? Most of the time, you're probably gonna find that you're selling the airplane ride. And if you're selling the airplane ride, you're doing it wrong. What you need to do is sell the resort, sell the resort, tell them what their life is going to be like after your vehicle takes them to the resort. And they'll hire you every single time, I promise you. So just remember the airplane test. Just remember, you wanna sell the resort, not the airplane ride. Now, the next thing is losses versus gain. You have to remember, people are much more motivated to avoid loss than they are to acquire gains. So whenever you're talking about somebody, make sure to talk about how you're going to help them avoid losses rather than acquire gains. Or you can talk about how you're gonna acquire gains, but you have to make sure that you really, really, really emphasize how you're going to help them avoid loss, how you're gonna help them avoid losing their house, how you're gonna help them avoid losing time with their kids, how you're gonna help them avoid losing more money because they're out of work because they're injured, right? So you have to remember, People are much more motivated to avoid loss than they are to acquire gain. So just remember that in your messaging and, and, and use that in all of your messaging, whether it's an ad, whether it's a consultation, it doesn't matter where it is. Always remember loss is more important than gain. Now, answering your phones 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is one of the easiest ways to get more clients. There's an example I always give where I go to Google and I search Honolulu personal injury attorney, and I do it at about eight o'clock in the morning here in Florida. I'm on East Coast time. So that means it's like two o'clock in the morning in, in Hawaii. I don't know exactly what time it is, but it's something like that, right? So what's interesting is that you'll see there's always three personal injury attorneys that come up in the Google three pack. One of them says open 24 hours and the other one says closed and the next one says closed. So there's two closed and there's one that's open 24 hours. Now, let me ask you a question. If you're presented with a list of three options, two of which are closed, and you're ready to call somebody right now, who are you gonna call? Yeah, you're gonna call the one that's open, right? And I tell people this all the time, and people are like, no, people don't call in the middle of the night. People don't call in the middle of the night. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. I promise you they do. In fact, we've had immigration attorneys who have switched their hours from, from, from nine to five to 24 hours a day, and that night they get calls and they get clients from it. I had a personal injury attorney who got a million dollar case. The very weekend I asked, I said, listen, just do a test. Change your uh, your phone to 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just through this weekend and see what happens. He got a $1 million case because of the fact that somebody called him over the weekend uh, or uh, and he gets calls overnight now. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So make sure that your calls are answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week because people work different hours. Some people work the night shift. Some people get injured in the middle of the night and they call an attorney, right? You never know what's actually gonna happen, but I can guarantee you, you're not gonna get the call if it says closed next to your name on your Google business profile. So make sure that your phones are answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week by a real person. Now, the next thing is if you're running ads, if you're running ads, either Google ads or Facebook ads or things like that. Now, not necessarily Facebook ads as much anymore, but especially Google ads. If you're running uh, uh, a display ads or if you're running any kind of ads on Google, make sure that you have a dedicated landing page for your ads. So many lawyers make the mistake and it's not even their mistake, it's their marketing companies that they hire, of just running an ad to your website. They have an ad for a car accident, for example, and it just drops them right on the homepage of the website, or it drops them on just the car accident page of their website. This is not good. Your website should be built for design, it should be built for SEO, and it should be built for conversion rate optimization. However, most of the time, websites are only built for the design first, and then a little bit of SEO, and they have no conversion rate optimization whatsoever. So I promise you, if you don't have a dedicated landing page for your ads, you are losing money hand over fist in wasted ad spend. And not only that, because people are going to your page, they're clicking on the ad, they're going to the page and, and clicking back, your ads are costing you more money because Google charges you more money if people are not getting a great result from your ad. So the easiest way to fix this is by having a dedicated landing page for your ads. So for example, if you have a car accident ad, they should land on a page that is dedicated to car accidents and only has all the conversion rate optimization uh, elements on it necessary to get them to pick up the phone and call you. If you're also running a motorcycle ad, you should have a separate motorcycle accident landing page. If you are also doing traumatic brain injuries, you should also have a dedicated traumatic brain injury page. The ad needs to go to a dedicated landing page, not your website, an actual dedicated landing page and you will get so much better results. Now, here's another tip that we see all the time. 
make the ads and the message on the landing page match. There's so many times when we see attorneys that have one message in their ad and then another message on their landing page, and the two aren't congruent. I saw a presentation from one of the head funnel builders at Adobe, and Adobe's a massive company, right? And they test everything. He said the only thing that really made a meaningful impact on any of their, their, their conversion rates on any of their landing pages was making sure that the message in the ad and the landing page matched. If you do that, then you're going to have much better success and much better conversion rates. Think about this in your own experience. Have you ever seen an ad that says, get this deal, get this special offer, say like, you know, get, get this, this widget for $10 and then you click on the page and you can't find it anywhere. Did you search around the website or did you leave? Most people leave, right? I know that that's happened to me a bunch of times. When, when the message in the ad does not match the message on the landing page, then people don't convert, right? A confused mind always says no. Just remember that. Now, the next thing, stop writing and talking like a lawyer. All right, so here's the problem. Lawyers have a high school de degree. They are high school diploma a college degree, a postgraduate degree, and you've passed the bar exam, right? So your level of knowledge is up to here. Now, while that's great and you're really smart, the problem is the average American reads at an eighth grade level. So you're up here talking a here and the average American is here. So there's two options. One, you can either figure out how to make the entire American public come up to your level, which is probably not going to happen, or you can simplify your message and come down here, right? The thing you have to remember, and I've already said it, is that a confused mind always says no. So if you're just showing how smart you are by using really big terms and by using legalese that no one understands, then what's going to happen is you're going to prove how smart you are and everyone's going to be really confused and they're going to leave. So what you need to do is you need to pretend that you're talking to a third grader, right? And, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I wrote a book called Five Star Attorney that teaches lawyers how to get reviews and how to grow their law firms using reviews. The book is for attorneys, right? For these people with the education up here. I put the book at a fifth grade level. The entire book was written at a fifth grade level. And why was that? It was because I understand if I have a message that I want to convey, I have to make it as simple as possible for people to consume that message, right? So even though I'm writing for attorneys, people who are probably smarter than me, mind you, I still put it at a fifth grade level. And the comments that I get over and over and over again on that book is that, wow, that book was so amazing. I sat down, I, I read it in one sitting. Why is that? Because I made it really easy for them because I want them to actually consume the content because then they'll actually go on and get reviews and, and do all that stuff. And I hear constantly how amazing that book is and how it's changed people's lives. And the thing I always laugh about is that it's because I made it super, super simple. So stop writing like a lawyer. Stop talking like a lawyer. Just remember to, to explain things like you're trying to explain it to a third grader because most Americans read at an eighth grade level and a confused mind always says no. So even though you might feel really smart, what's going to happen is you're going to lose a lot of money and there's nothing smart about losing money. Uh, now, here's another thing. When you're running ads, when, when you're using Facebook, when you're using YouTube, when you're doing anything like that, one rule of thumb is always to try to avoid using platform colors. So what does that mean? That means that if you're running ads on YouTube, for example, don't use red and, and black colors because red and black is YouTube and that's their color scheme and it'll blend in. If you're running ads on Facebook, avoid using blue and white. Try to use that. That would be a good place to use maybe red and black. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you stand out, right? So and we're going to talk more about pattern interrupts and things like that. But that's just one thing on the on the subject of ads. Pattern interrupts. Let's talk about pattern interrupts. So I want you to picture, especially if we're talking about like like videos and, and Facebook ads and, and, and things like that. And even if it's just social media posts, even if it's just your personal social media posts, what I want you to do is I want you to picture your, your, your ideal clients just sitting there, just scrolling. If you have a teenager, this is actually really good. Just picture them scrolling, right? I've got, I've got a teenager and I've got a, a, an 11 year old. So she, they're, they're both on their phones constantly and they're always scrolling. They're always scrolling. They're always scrolling. So you got to picture what is, what can you do that is going to interrupt them and like shake them and like make them stop on your post because they're going to keep going. Cause you have to remember, you're not just competing against every other lawyer. You're competing against everything on social media, which is like insane, right? So you have to have something that's going to grab their attention, whether it's a catchy image or whether it's some sort of controversial saying, or whether it's something you just have to play around. 
And the easiest way to do this is start scrolling through and start noticing what are the things that grab your attention? What are the things that shake you and make you stop and pay attention? Those are the, t- the first things that you should test out with your own marketing. Because if you, don't, if you don't use pattern interrupts, if you just blend into everyone else, then what's going to happen is you're just going to blend in and your message is going to go, is going to get missed and your ads aren't going to work, right? So you got to use pattern interrupts. Now, when you're creating video content, um, the first three seconds of your video are vital, especially with ads and with really anything, but especially with ads, right? Because again, people are just sitting there scrolling, 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 scrolling. So if you start with your ad with, my name is Bill Smith and I'm a personal injury attorney and I'm Martindale Hubble AV rated and I've, I'm a super lawyer and I've been representing car accident victims with the fullest integrity for the last 27, like they, they, they already left. They, they, nobody cares. They already left, right? But if you start your video with more motorcycle riders have been killed in Florida using this one maneuver than any other thing you can do on a motorcycle, well, that's something that's probably going to get the attention of motorcycle riders and they're probably going to watch the video, right? So the idea is that you want to do something in the beginning of the video that's going to get their attention and make them watch the rest of the video because it doesn't matter how great the content is. If they don't watch it, it's going to fall on deaf ears and nobody's going to see it, right? So you have to make sure the first three seconds are vitally important to making sure that your, your videos actually get watched and your ads are, are effective. So many times I talk to lawyers and they say, well, my ads didn't work. And I look at their videos and it's because they did that whole, hi, my name is Bill Smith and I'm an attorney and I do blah, 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 blah. And it's about me and about me and about me, right? Just don't do that. Just get right to the get, get right to the good part and get something that's going to actually capture their attention, right? You've got to stop them and you got to shake them, and that in itself is also a pattern interrupt. Now, the next thing, marketing, remarketing, remarketing is essential. Have you ever been on a website like uh, Amazon or Wayfair, and let's say you're looking at like a toaster, for example, right? And you leave the website and you don't buy the toaster, and then all of a sudden. There's toasters everywhere. You see the ads for these toasters, the same toaster you were looking at, right? Well, here's a hint. Amazon, Wayfair, Best Buy, like all these websites, they're not dumb. They have the data. They understand that only 3% of people in any given market are actually ready to make a purchase. That means that 97% of people, they're going to come to their website. They're going to look at the stuff and then they're going to leave and they're not going to buy. So what they do is they run remarketing ads. And these ads are significantly cheaper to run than any other type of ad. And what ends up happening is because they run these ads, they make so much more money because only 3% of people are actually ready to buy during the first time they hit the website. So if you look, take the same process, the same idea approach with your law firm, and you understand that, look, most people that come to my website, most people that click on my ads, most people that watch my social media videos are not going to buy on the first go. All I have to do is just keep following up with them and keep following up with them and keep following up with them because the reality is they wouldn't be there if they didn't have a problem, right? But think about in your own life, how many times have you been in a situation where you've been on a website, maybe you've clicked on an ad, maybe you're standing in line uh, at the grocery store, maybe you're sitting at the dentist office or whatever, and you're just scrolling around and you click on something. But even if you want to call, you're not in a position where you actually can make a phone call, right? So what ends up happening is if you're not running remarketing ads, meaning ads that are following people around the internet, then what's going to happen is they're never going to be able to find you again. So just by running these simple remarketing ads, this is the way to make ads work. Even if they find you organically, even if they go to Google, search personal injury attorney near me, and you show up in the Google three pack and it's completely free, they click on it. They go to your website, they look around and everything, and they leave. Like you still should have a, a, a pixel on there that starts showing them ads, starts showing them follow up, because most people are not ready to buy right away. Most people will eventually hire you if you just keep reminding them about you. Right? That's something that's very, very important, and it's the way to make ads work. So many people that I talk to, so many law firms that I talk to, miss this vital step. The follow up is where the fortune is made. Just remember, the fortune is in the follow up. Now, the next thing is when somebody calls your law firm, make sure to have a real person answer your phone, a real person at all times. I can't tell you how many law law firms I've called that have the phone tree, the thank you for calling the Smith Law Firm, press one for this and press two for that and press three for this. Let me ask you a question. Like, do you love calling your bank? 
do you just love calling Chase and just like talking to that message? And then when there's some noise in the background, it cuts you off. Like, it's so annoying, right? I hate it. You hate it too. I know you hate it. I, I know you can't. I'm talking to a video camera right now, but I know you hate it, right? Well, your clients hate it as well. So um, we've actually seen this before. We had a client who he, he, was, he was killing it and he got really, bu- really busy. And he ended up switching to a phone tree. And we started looking at his phone, t- phone calls and we started seeing all these one minute calls, these one minute calls. And we realize that what's happening is they're not actually one minute calls. They're calls where somebody calls and then hangs up because they hear a message, right? So I made a bet with him. I was like, look, if, if you get rid of the phone tree, have a real person answer your, answer your phone. And if you don't double your cases next month, then I will not only pay for your marketing, I'll give you free marketing for a month, but I'll also pay for your phone tree just because I'm just because just to say that I was wrong, right? Well, next, next month came around, he got more than double the amount of cases. And I knew that was going to happen because I saw how many people were hanging up on the phone tree. Uh, You know, he was happier. He made more money and I didn't have to pay for his marketing, right? So just let that be a lesson. Have a real person answer your phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Not an answering machine, uh, not a phone tree, a real person. Trust me, it is worth the investment um, because what you save in productivity, you're going to make so much more money just by getting more people on the phone and getting more clients. Okay. The next thing, follow up with all leads several times. Have you ever had a lead contact you via your website or maybe the chat box on your website, or maybe they send you a message on social media, or maybe they send you an email, or maybe somehow they left you a voicemail and you call them back one time and they don't answer the phone, right? Happens all the time, right? Well, the problem is most of the time you just give up after that first call. We actually had a client one time who uh, we, we ran two campaigns for two attorneys. It was the ident- identical campaign. One was an attorney up in New York. Another was an attorney down in Florida. We ran the same ads, the same landing pages. Like literally, it was copy and paste. They both got approximately 300 leads. The first client got 300 leads and didn't get a single case. The second client got 300 leads and got 75 cases. And his average case value was several thousand dollars. So you can do the math on that. So... I called the first attorney and I was like, what happened? How did you not get any cases? And he said, well, I called my leads, but they just didn't get back to me. I just, I, nobody answered the phone. I couldn't get anybody on the phone. So I said, okay, that's interesting. So I called the second attorney and I talked to the second attorney and the attorney said, uh, and I said, how did you get all these cases? I talked to another guy and he said that he couldn't get anyone on the phone. And he kind of laughed and he's like, yeah, nobody answers the phone the first time. You've got to call them over and over and over again. So he told me about this really cool system that he has. He calls it three times, three ways where basically he contacts everyone three times, three ways. So on day one, he texts them and then he calls them and then he emails them. And he doesn't do this. He has a team that does this. And then if they don't hear back on day two, they send another text, they get another phone call and they do another email. And then uh, on day three, they get another text, they get another call and they get another email. And using this, this system, he was able to turn 300 leads into 75 cases where the other guy was able to turn 300 leads into no cases. Right. And it's all a matter of follow-up right now. I've actually uh, seen lawyers that even do this five times and there's some other cool things you can do as well. So for example, when you send a text message, make sure that you include your name in the text message, because if you've ever seen on an iPhone before, when it says somebody calls you and it says, maybe John Smith, Well, that's coming from emails and text messages. So if you say, if your first text message is, hi, this is attorney Mike Smith or attorney Jane Smith or whatever your name is, um, and then you wait about 15 minutes, if they open that text message, then what's going to happen is when you call 15 minutes later, assuming you call from the same number, then it's going to say the phone number, maybe Jane Smith, right? And that makes it much more likely that they're going to answer. So always send the text message with your full name. Another thing is vary your call times. Sometimes people go to the gym every morning from nine to 10. And if you call every morning at nine to 10, you're going to miss them, right? So have different windows, call in the morning, call in the afternoon, call in the evening. Now, uh, an attorney uh, named Ethan Ostroff told me about something he calls the golden hour. Um, And that is from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And that is when most people will pick up their phone. So if you can do it, call people at five from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Because that's when people are off work, they're home, they're doing stuff, and they're much more likely to answer their phone. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this, but the idea is that you have to follow up multiple times. Most people don't answer calls from phone numbers that they don't know. I know I don't do it. I mean, there's billions of robocalls every single day. 
So you have to make sure that you're following up several times because each one of these, they called you for a reason. They contacted you for a reason, right? And there's a good chance that they still need an attorney. So it's worth your time to put a system in place that's actually going to follow up over and over and over again. Now, when you do finally get them on the phone, um, what you want to do is you want to talk about them not you. Now, this isn't just when you're on the phone. This is in your ads. This is on your website. This is in your landing pages. This is everywhere, right? Remember, people only care about themselves. People only care about what's important to them. Dale Carnegie says that the sweetest sound to any person is the sound of their own voice. So what you want to do is you don't want to talk about yourself. Don't talk about how you're a super lawyer and how you went to Harvard and you did all this stuff and you've done all this great stuff. No, 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 no. Talk about how they are going to benefit from hiring you. There's three things you should talk about is what they want, how they get it, and what their life is going to be like after they get it. Those are the only three things your conversation should be about, right? What they want, how they get it, and what their life is going to be like after they get it. And if you can show them all those benefits, all the ways that hiring you is in their best interest, how they are going to get the best outcome for them by hiring you, then they'll hire you every time. There's a saying. Uh, if holes dug themselves, no one would ever buy a shovel, right? (laughs) Nobody wants a shovel. They want the hole. What they want is they want the outcome that you as a lawyer can deliver to them. They don't care about you. They don't want to, nobody wants to hire a lawyer. Usually hiring a lawyer is not good news, right? Usually something bad happened when it's time to hire a lawyer and it's usually money that they weren't planning on spending and things like that, right? So you have to explain to them why it is in their best interest to hire you, right? So don't talk about yourself. Talk about them. Talk about what their life is going to be like, and it will work way better for you, right? Now, the next thing is prove you can help them by actually helping them. And the way that I like doing this is through videos and through content and things like that, because at the end of the day, you know, what separates you from every other lawyer around? Most people don't really know, right? You can say your credentials and all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, if you can actually help people solve small problems, they will eventually hire you to solve the big problem for them, right? Now, the easiest way you can do this is just by creating content, just by creating videos, creating value videos. They don't have to be long, drawn out videos like this one. This is just kind of a compilation of all my my best tips. But just create small videos that help people. Just think about what are the biggest problems that your that your clients have when they come in and just start create like create one video per problem and just talk about the solution. That's all you have to do. Prove you can help people by actually helping them and they will hire you. They will be throwing money at you. I've seen it over and over and over again. My clients that do this are very 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 successful because of the fact that people come in their office and they don't have to sell them on anything. The people are the the, the potential clients already know that our clients can help them. And the reason why is because they've already helped them. They've already watched YouTube videos. They've already watched Facebook and TikTok videos um, and Instagram videos where they've solved their small problems. And now they're ready to hire them for the big problems. So just think about this. If you can prove that you can help people by actually helping them, they are much more likely to hire you. And the easiest way to do this is just to film a video every single day. And I know it sounds tedious, but it's really not. Everybody has this thing in their pocket, right? You just pull it out. You just do it every day. And honestly, what's cool is that you don't necessarily have to even know what you're going to film a video on. Stuff comes up in your day in your day to day work. I'm sure that is interesting every day that you wouldn't even think about creating content on. But if somebody asks you an interesting question, or somebody just asks you a question that they're always asking you, then you know as soon as they leave, pull out your phone and be like, "Hey, somebody just asked me this question," uh, and then just film the video on it. You know what I mean? And what's interesting is that I think it's a quantity game. It's not necessarily necessarily a quality game. Like you need to have quality in your answers, but you don't have to worry about having big production value. Like, look what I'm doing right here. This video is literally, I'm just using Loom and I took a a Google slide presentation and I just typed some words on a document. And I'm sure that people are finding a lot of this information very helpful, right? It's the quality of the content. It's not necessarily that it needs to be this high quality uh, production, right? The best thing to do is just film a video every single day and you'll get into the habit of filming a video every single day. Now, the other thing is some people are like, well, I don't like, I'm not very good on camera. I suck on camera. Well, yeah, everybody sucks on camera when they first start, right? The way you get good at that is by doing it. The way you get good at anything is by doing something. You didn't learn to swim by sitting in a conference. You learned to swim by jumping in the pool and flailing your arms and kicking your legs and sucking down water and feeling you're going to die. And now eventually you probably are a pretty good swimmer, right? So it's the same type of thing. Nobody learns to ride a bike in a conference. Nobody learns to 
Um, nobody learns to swim in a conference. The way you get good at riding a bike, the way you get good at uh, 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 swimming, the way you become a good lawyer is by doing it, right? So you just have to do it. And if you do it every single day, it'll become second nature to you and it'll actually be really easy. Now, the next thing is, like I said, keep videos very, very simple. And this specifically refers to the setup, meaning your production setup. So if you could zoom out and see my room right here, I have this microphone right here. It's permanently mounted to my computer. I have this 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 uh, camera right now. It's permanently mounted. I have a light right above there that's permanently mounted. The reason this is important is because I don't have to set up every single time that I'm going to do a video. All I have to do is I have the, I have a remote. I can turn the light on. It's off now. Turn it on. I hit record and I go, right? I just, I move my, I move my microphone over here. You can see it's on the thing here and I go, right? So why is that important? That's important because the more hurdles and the more obstacles that you put in place of you uh, 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 filming videos, the less likely you are to actually film the video, right? So honestly, the easiest thing you can do is just use your cell phone, pull out your cell phone and just record the video. Um, I used to think that I needed a, sp a separate microphone. So I used my AirPods. And what's funny is that I was using the AirPods and people used to ask me, what microphone do you use? I'm like, oh, just use the AirPods. The AirPods sound great. And what I learned later is that AirPods don't actually, the microphone from the AirPods don't actually even, it's not even activated when you're filming videos on the iPhone. So what I was actually hearing is the onboard microphone on the iPhone. And I was an idiot. And I thought I was, I thought it was the AirPods were sounding great, but it's actually the microphone on the phone sounding great, right? We all have these like crazy cameras in our pockets. Just use that. You don't have to do anything. And a lot of times, you know, you'll, you'll film the video and then you'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do a bunch of different takes and I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do it and I screw up and then I'm going to fix it in post and I'm going to do editing. Like just, just start the video over. It's so much easier just to, just to do it. Like, like do the video three or four times until you get a good take of it. Um, which in the beginning is going to take you a little longer in the beginning. It will take you a, a few more tries to get a good take, but it's way easier to do that than have to worry about editing and doing all that type of stuff, right? So just try to keep your video as simple as humanly possible. I've got, I mean, I've got 1500 videos or 13, 1300 videos or something like that on YouTube. Um, and then I've probably got another, you know, 700, 800 videos that I've done for my coaching. And, and I mean, I, I've probably filmed 3000 videos by this point. And the one thing that is true is that first of all, the more you do, the easier it gets. Uh, but second, the, 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 the less steps involved, the more likely you are to film a video, right? Um, I know that there's been times when I've tried to have like, you know, I've tried to have the green screen set up and I've tried to, you know, have the nice camera and all that type of stuff. And every single time it's just a, it's, it's a burden and I don't do it. Right. So set yourself up by success by either just using your iPhone or having a permanent setup so that you can always, uh, so that you can just flip a switch and then you're ready to go film a video. That's the easiest thing. It's the easiest way to do it consistently. Um, now this should go without saying, but you want to make sure that you use custom thumbnails on your YouTube videos. Uh, take a look at my YouTube channel and you'll see that I have custom thumbnails. They're bright colors. They have no more than five or six words and they're really, really catchy, right? That's one of the easiest ways to get more people to watch your videos. You don't want to just leave, use the thumbnail that, 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 uh, Google get or that, uh, YouTube gives you. Now, one of the things you can do is just go to fiverr.com, F I V V E R.com and find someone to, you know, type in a uh, YouTube thumbnail. There's tons of graphic designers that'll give you cheap YouTube thumbnails. Um, and, uh, if you want to get a little more, uh, a little more crazy, go to uh, mid journey and, um, you might be able to use mid journey to use AI, but I'm not going to go into that, that here, the, but I mean, for years I've used Fiverr and it's, it's never let me down. But, um, if you want to see my YouTube channel, it's lawyer marketing with Andrew stickle. That's the, uh, that's the YouTube channel. You can just go look and see how we do our thumbnails. All right. So the ex next thing is repurpose your videos. A lot of times people think that I'm everywhere. They see me on YouTube. They see me on Facebook. They see me on Instagram. <laughs> they see me on TikTok. The reality is I film one video one time and then my team just posts it everywhere. Right? So because different people hang out on different platforms, some people hang out on YouTube, some people hang out on TikTok, some people hang out on, on Instagram. Right? So you never know where they're going to be. So you film one video one time and then you just repurpose it everywhere. It's the easiest way to be omnipresent. That's the word omnipresent. It's the easiest way to be omnipresent. Um, is just to have have a team post your videos everywhere. And if you don't know where to get a team from, just go to onlinejobs.ph and find a social media manager. That is a job board in the Philippines. We've hired hundreds of virtual assistants 
from the Philippines. Um, another thing is uh, we also have a, a service that you can use if you want our help, specifically finding your um, finding your virtual assistant. It's called Attorney Assistant. Um, you can go to attorneyassistant.com, and we actually you know source uh, source virtual assistants for you. We use it for intake. We use it for matters things. So like helping with uh, day-to-day operations in your law firm, and they just change the game for a lot of people. So either onlinejobs.ph, uh, you can go to Upwork, or we can help you out with attorneyassistant.com. All right, so if you're not exactly sure what to talk about, one thing you can do is you can be a reporter. And what that means is just find interesting people that are related to your field and interview them, ask them questions. If you're a, let's say you're a criminal defense attorney, interview some police officers, ask them questions. You know, <laughs> like It's all interesting content that you can do. Um, you know, offer to interview people, offer to interview just wh- whoever that, that would be interesting. And you can use this content for your channel. I do this all the time. If you look at my channel, you see I have lots of interviews from lots of people um, that some of them are attorneys and some of them are not attorneys, but they're people that can, you know, provide interesting information that attorneys would be interested in. So again, this is why you have to think about who am I targeting? Who is my ideal client? What information would they find interesting, right? And as long as they find it interesting, it doesn't have to be 100% directly related to the exact thing that you do. Cause at the end of the day, it's all about attention, right? It's all about getting the attention. There's a, a guy named Ali Awad, um, and he does, uh, he, he's, he, I've interviewed him before. I've, I've, I've met with him a few times and he has a massive TikTok following on, um, he goes by the CEO lawyer, um, and he does personal injury, but what's cool is that he'll create content on family law. He'll create, create content on criminal de- defense. He'll create content, on all this stuff. And the reason why is he understands that the attention is what he wants, right? He just wants, he wants to create content that people actually care about, right? So what he does is he creates all this content and then because they have the attention, then when somebody gets injured or somebody gets into an accident, then they call him or he can then refer the, the, the if, if somebody says, hey, I need a criminal defense lawyer, he can then refer that out and get a referral fee, right? So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, now, the next thing you have to understand is the most valuable thing you can do is own your traffic. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's three types of traffic. There's traffic that you control. There's traffic that you don't control, and then there's traffic that you own. So traffic that you control is things like Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, things like, well, you probably don't run TikTok ads, but ads, right? You control it because you can turn it on or you can turn it off. But the problem is, is that as long as you're paying for the traffic, it'll come to you, right? But the second you turn it off, it's like you never even existed, right? So that's traffic you control. Now, traffic that you don't control are things like, like like SEO, for example, or referrals. Like you can kind of influence SEO, but if Google decides they don't like you, then you're gone and there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, same thing with referrals. You can have referral partners that are sending you traffic and all that type of stuff. But let's say one day you make your referral partners mad um, and they just decide, oh, I don't want to send you referrals anymore. Well, you don't control that. They're gone, right? So the goal should always be turn traffic that you control and traffic that you don't control into traffic that you own. Now, what is traffic that you own? Traffic that you own is when you have the name, the email address, the phone number, maybe the physical addresses. And that way, you no longer have to pay Facebook every single time you want to reach somebody. That way, you can send an email out whenever you want to that list, or you can send a text message whenever you want to that list and get your message out to them without having to pay anybody. And that is the way that you can really take control of your business because you own that traffic. That's why it's so important to always be collecting email addresses, phone numbers, text messages, not just from clients, but from anybody that comes to your website. And there's a lot of really cool ways to do that, including like a lead magnet. So if you create lead magnets, so if you create a lead magnet, here's a perfect example. We did a lead magnet for the traumatic brain injury attorney. And what we did is we created a lead magnet targeting his ideal clients, and it was all the resources available to people who are caring for a loved one with a traumatic brain injury. That's a great lead magnet if you're caring for somebody with a traumatic brain injury. So all you have to do is give us your email address and your phone number, and we'll, we'll email you this resource that gives you, it's a PDF that has all the information, all the resources you could possibly need about caring for somebody with a traumatic brain injury. And that gets email addresses. And now we can email them over and over and over again, which brings me to my point, email them every day. Now, there's a difference between emailing every day with value and emailing every day with spam. You don't want to email every day with spam. What you want to do is you want to just provide value. Just provide them with some sort of piece of value every single day. Again, 
prove you can help them by actually helping them, right? So every day, just think about like, and this is why it's important to film videos every single day, because if you can film a video every single day and the purpose of that video just answers questions and helps people, then all you have to do is send an email to your list saying, hey, uh, do you have this problem? Well, I just filmed a video that shows you how to solve it. Check it out. And then a link to the video. And that's all you have to do. But what that's going to do is, first of all, that's going to get people engaged with you. It's going to make them watch your videos. It's going to make them know, like, and trust you, which in turn makes them feel closer to you, which is going to make them hire you, right? And you don't have to do it with, you don't have to say, hire our law firm, hire our law firm, hire our law firm. In fact, you shouldn't do that. I don't believe that you should do that. I, I, I think that, especially for me, we get the best results when we have no pitch at all when it's just basically proving we can help people by actually helping them. And people don't get mad when you email them every day if you're emailing them every day with value. That's the difference. If it's spam, people will get annoyed and they unsubscribe. If you're helping them solve problems, then they actually look forward to your email. And we actually get people emailing us saying, hey, I love your emails. Can I get on your email list, right? That's because we're emailing them every single day with value. Now, another thing you can do is get featured on the local news. You probably don't realize this, but most reporters... Every single day they wake up and they have this, this wave of anxiety rush over them because they think, crap, what am I going to talk about today? Every single day, the reporters actually have to go out and find interesting stories, right? So as attorneys, if you can think of interesting stories and interesting things, whether it's related to uh, you know injustices in the law, if it's related to like sa- public safety things, like whatever it is, um, you can get on the news just by reaching out to reporters on a regular basis. Now, here's the thing. Your law firm getting a new partner is not news. Nobody cares, right? Uh, For it to be news, it should affect a lot of people and you should be able to prove it, right? And what I mean by prove it is you should be able to provide pictures or interviews or things like that, right? So it it should be a problem that needs solving. It should affect a lot of people and it should you should be able to prove it with pictures, interviews, videos, things like that, right? And if you do that and you give that to reporters, then you will have a lot of success. Now, the way that you find reporters is just find go to the, the news websites and, and find out who they are, add them as friends on Facebook, like their stuff on Twitter. And what you want to do is make sure to build a rapport with them before you start pitching. So just st- go through, start liking their posts when they post, comment on it, but don't be creepy about it. Just comment like, oh yeah, that's a good point or things like that. So that when you reach out to them for the first time, it's not cold. You want them to recognize your name a few times. And then when you, what you want to do is you want to send them a, a direct message that says, hey, I have a quick story idea for you. And then you want it to be very, very short. The, the rule of thumb is you want the pitch to be short enough to read at a traffic light, right? So if they're sitting at a traffic light, right? Um, now, if they don't get back to you, follow up. Again, the fortune's in the follow-up. And if they don't get back to you again, then try again a couple days later, right? Just keep following up and following up. Eventually, it, they will get back to you because reporters need you more than you need them, believe it or not. And when you do that, then you can take these clips. First of all, you'll get free publicity for being on the news. But the even better part is that you can take these clips and put them on your website. And you can put as seen on CNN and as seen on ABC Local and all these different places or Fox News or MSNBC or wherever it is that you're on. Um, and then people go to your website and they see the credibility and they say, wow, this person has been featured on that. Wow. They must be a really good attorney because most people don't realize how easy it actually is to get on the news. They just think that if you're on the news, you're special and there's something about you that it makes you better than everyone else. And it's going to make more people hire you, right? So this is a legitimate strategy to get more business. Plus you get free publicity. When you are creating content, when you're creating videos, do whatever you can to build rapport with Uh, your viewers. So you can't see it, but right over there, I actually have a Lionel Messi jersey. He's a soccer player. And I used to have it directly behind me. And I used to get so many comments from people who are also soccer fans. And they'd be like, oh, Messi's the best. And you know, like, so I was talking to an attorney one time. He's like, what should I wear in my videos? Should I wear like a suit or should I wear, um, you know, a a button down shirt or what should I, what should I wear? Should I wear a tie? And I, I, I know he's from Boston. I was like, honestly, you'd be better wearing like a Red Sox jersey uh, and, or a Red Sox shirt. That way you can build rapport with people, show people that you're a real person, right? So ways that you can build rapport are local sports, military, pets, things like that. Do whatever you can to try to build a rapport with the viewer. I have a, a dog. She's actually, where is she? She's laying around here somewhere. And sometimes she's in the back of my videos. And a lot of times she'll walk through the back of the video or whatever, or she'll bark or whatever. And people will comment, hey, what kind of dog do you have? I have this kind of dog. You know, like just build rapport 
with the audience. When you build rapport, they're going to feel like they know, like, and trust you. It's going to make them come closer to you. So do whatever you can to build rapport. That should be a really big focus of what you do. Okay. Now the next thing is get a unique business card. So I have these business cards right here. And what's cool is that they're, you can see there, let me see if I can get it to zoom in here. Hang on. All right. So you can see it's like, this is my old company, Social Firestarter. And what's cool is that this is like, it's, it's like a credit card. It's thick like a credit card. It's see-through. You can see through it. It's plastic. And what's awesome about this is that this makes an impression everywhere I go. Every time I hand this card to somebody, the first thing they say to me is, wow, cool business card, right? Now, when you're not around, your business card is the only thing that people have to remember you by. So these are a little bit more expensive. However, what's interesting is that I've given these business cards to people and every, I've, gone, I've gone into their office six, six months later and they still have my business card sitting on their desk. And I asked them why. And they're like, well, it, it would seem too nice to throw away, right? So get unique business cards. Get a business card that is going to make you stand out. Prove you're different by actually being different. Every lawyer has the exact same business card. Now, I get these business cards from plasticprinters.com. Um, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I just like them. Um, I have ordered cheaper business cards uh, from other other plastic business card printers and they suck and I ended up throwing them away and just going with the plasticprinters.com cards. So save the money that you're going to waste on on the cheaper cards and just buy from plasticprinters.com. Now, use these for promotion. You can also have two sets of business cards. If you need to give business cards out to people who you're not trying to get to hire you, give them a different set of business cards, right? But these plastic business cards make a huge, huge, huge difference right? And people will hire you based on the fact that they just remember you and they keep your business card. And what's interesting is that every time I give it out, like I said, first thing everybody says is, wow, cool business card, you know? So make sure that you do that. Get a unique business card and it will make a big difference in your business. The next thing is lumpy mail. Now, a lot of times people will send out mailers and this goes out, you know, this is like estate planning attorneys or sometimes um, if you're a criminal defense attorney, you'll send something out when somebody gets arrested, right? So Lumpy Mail uses one of the most important tools that we have in marketing, which is curiosity. Now, what you want to do is you want to find um, low cost items that you can put in the mail, in, in your mail, that will actually make it lumpy. Because what you want them to do, like the number one thing you need to do is you need that to get them to open the mail, right? I get direct mail sent to me all the time. Most of it just goes straight in the trash, except for when there's something inside of it, right? Uh, there's been times when I've gotten a pen where I've gotten different things, right? So like, imagine you're a criminal defense attorney, you go on Amazon and you buy um, a bag of 250 green army men, those little plastic green army men, right? And you uh, put each one of those in, in, in the letter when you send out the, hey, you were just arrested, we can represent you, right? What if you put a green army man in there and you say, we're gonna go to war against these charges for you, right? Or something like that, right? Just the fact that, getting them to open the mail when they've got 15 other letters from law firms as well, that's like a big step, right? So make sure that if you're gonna do direct mail, make sure that it's always lumpy mail because just like the pattern interrupt, this is a pattern interrupt as well. You've gotta do something that's actually going to get them to open the envelope. And when you do that, you're gonna get much better results. Now, yes, it is going to be more expensive. However, your ROI is going to be much higher because people are actually opening the letter rather than just throwing it away with all the other stuff. So it's super, super important to do that. The next thing is form strategic partnerships. There's lots and lots of businesses out there who you are not competing with, who are also going after the same audience as you, who have the same potential customers as you. So figure out what services do they need before they hire you? What services do they need during the time that they're working with you? And what services do they need after they hire you? And form strategic partnerships with these businesses, either referral fees. If you can't do referral fees, then what you can do is trade leads back and forth or trade or, or basically get, just give referrals. Like you say, listen, I promise to make you my exclusive referral partner if you make me your exclusive referral partner and trade leads back and forth. By forming strategic partnerships with all of these businesses, um, that are going after the same leads as you are, the same audience that you are, then you're going to be able to uh, work and, and get lots of clients. So for example, let's say you're a family law attorney. What do most people need? Most people probably need a therapist. They probably need a real estate agent. They probably need a mortgage broker. Like all of these different people that you can, that you can work with um, to trade leads back and forth. And basically, um, if you provide value to them, they'll provide value back to you and you can make a lot of money on this without actually having to spend a lot of money. All right, so... 
Streaking. This is something I learned from an attorney named John Fisher, um, and he does something called streaking. Now, it's not running around with your clothes off. What streaking is, is he actually... Um, he creates a streak. So every he has a streak. Like a, like if you ever heard of baseball, they are, they're on a hitting streak, which means they've gotten or a winning streak. A hitting streak means they've they've gotten a hit in like fifteen games in a row, or winning streak is they won twenty games in a row, or whatever, right? So what he does is he sets a streak of doing two things. One is every single day he sends an email to a potential strategic partner, and he does it every single day, doesn't miss a day. And then he also sends out at least one review request every single day. And what's cool about that is that by doing that, first of all, you're less likely to not do it because you don't want to break your streak. Once you're 10 days in, you're like, well, I've done it 10 days. I don't want to go back to zero. But it's just about forming the habit. It's about forming the consistency. You can also go streaking with videos, right? But by having that consistency where every single day you send out one email just introducing yourself to one potential strategic partner, at the end of a year, you're going to have 365 emails that you've sent. Imagine just like I don't know, like 10% of those turn into anything, right? Even refer you just one case. Now you have 36 referral partners that you're working with, right? And even if it's half of that, even if it's 5%, how, how amazing would it be if you had 10 or 15 or 20 referral partners that sent you business on a regular basis? Like that would be a game changer for your law firm. So streaking is a really, really good hack that you can use to grow your business. Now, I also mentioned reviews. Getting more reviews is vital for your law firm. Um, what we have found is that uh, the more reviews you get, the more money you make. And actually, Bizarre Voice Network found this as well. They found that when law firms get 200 reviews, actually, they found any business, including law firms, once they get 200 or more reviews, their revenue increases by 44%. So figure out what your revenue was last year and multiply it by 1.44. And basically, if you get 200 reviews, that means that's pretty much what your revenue is going to do, right? And it's it's very, very consistent. I've seen that so many times. Lawyers get reviews and they miraculously start getting more clients, right? And the reason why is because, first of all, it's social proof. But second of all, you also get lots of visibility because when you get Google reviews, Google reviews actually increase your rankings when they have words, phrases, keywords, and synonyms in them that are related to your business and your practice area and, and your geographical location, right? Now, how do you get a lot of reviews? Ask everyone for a review, even if they're not a client. If somebody's a consultation and you talk to them and maybe they don't even have a case, well, you can say, hey, listen, let me ask you a question. If I sent you a, a link, would you mind leaving us a review? We'd really appreciate it if uh, you just let everyone know that you know, at our law firm, even if you don't have a case, we'll still answer your questions and provide value. Like Most people will do that, right? So just ask everyone for a review. You also don't have to wait until the case is over to ask for a review. Ask for reviews and you will get reviews. Most The number one reason people don't get reviews is because they don't ask for enough reviews, right? Now, as I said, asking questions to get better reviews. Writer's block is one of the biggest reasons that people don't leave reviews. If you ask questions, not only will you get more reviews, but you also get those reviews that have the words, phrases, keywords, and synonyms in them. Now, the five questions you should always ask are what was the problem that you had before you came to our law firm? Why did you hire our firm over all the other firms in the area? What did we do for you? What were the results? And how did these results impact your life? Now, if you ask those questions, then what you can do is you can say, hey, we appreciate you. You send them a text message or an email. Say, you know, we appreciate you uh, taking the time to leave a review. Um, we found that the most helpful review, we found a lot of people don't know exactly what to say. And the most helpful reviews typically answer the following five questions. And then people will just go through and they'll answer the questions, right? But what that's going to do is that's going to get the words, phrases, keywords, and synonyms in the reviews, which is going to make you rank higher. It's also going to make them tell a story. When it tells a story, that means the reviews are going to, re people are going to read the reviews and they're going to relate much better to the reviews because they tell a story. So ask questions to get better reviews. Now, the next thing is respond to all reviews. This is one of the easiest things you can do. Just respond to all reviews um, because Google uh, has not really said a whole lot about what what goes into ranking locally, but they do mention that you should respond to your reviews. So again, it, this isn't going to be a magic bullet that's just going to make you shoot to number one, but it's like, just check the boxes of all the things you can control because when it comes to ranking in Google, there's lots of things you can control. There's lots of things you can't control. Responding to reviews is one of the things that you can control. So respond to all reviews because not only is that going to potentially increase your Google rankings, but it's also going to increase your, your conversion rate optimization because people are going to go through and read your reviews 
and they are going to look and see, uh, okay, cool, this is a law firm that actually responds and actually cares about feedback. So that includes negative reviews. <laughs> negative reviews uh, need to be responded to because remember, no response is a response. So if you have a bunch of negative reviews and they're unresponded to, then people are gonna think, oh, wow, well, they don't really care about their, their, their reviews. What you wanna do is you wanna use a strategy called the TIERS method. Um, and the TIERS method is an acronym, and start, the first one, T, st uh, stands for thank them uh, for their feedback. So what you want to do is you want to actually thank them for providing feedback, because the reality is, is that the way to get more review, the way to get more five-star reviews is to get more one-star reviews. And what that means is that if there is a legitimate problem with your law firm, then you need to find out about it, right? So you have to get, you have to get feedback. So thank them for providing feedback. So thank you so much for taking the time to leave your feedback. We provide, we value all opinions and all feedback, both positive and negative. And the next one is empathize. So empathize with their situation. So we understand based on your feedback that you are frustrated and we want to apologize for the frustration that you are experiencing. And apologize is the A in tears, right? Now you're not apologizing for what you may or may not have done. You're just apologizing for the frustration, right? Um, now, the R stands for resolution, offer to come to a resolution. So then you want to say, we would love to have the opportunity to speak with you so that we can discuss your comments and hopefully come to a resolution that is acceptable to everybody, right? Um, and then the S is switch channels. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, please call us at the office or send me an email so we can set up a time to talk and discuss the, the issue. Uh, thank you so much, sincerely, attorney so-and-so, right? And if you do that, that is a great response to a negative review that is going to lessen the blow of a negative review. Now, one more thing I want to say about negative reviews. Negative reviews are not necessarily bad. If you have all five-star reviews, then most people are not going to believe that they're real reviews. They actually have done research on this, and 82% of people will not believe that five-star reviews are real if they're not accompanied by one star review. So don't sweat a negative review. Just get more five star reviews. One or two negative reviews won't hurt, won't help you. It won't hurt you. It'll actually help you. Because of that, it'll actually validate the real reviews. All right, so now the other thing you can do is get video reviews. Interview people on Zoom. Just do a Zoom interview and ask them those same five questions and then send the video to a video editor and say, "Hey, can you just chop my voice out and make uh the video and and make it so that it's only the person speaking in the in the review?" Now, two tips on this. One, you want to make sure to instruct them to answer the question in a way that you know what the question is without, without actually hearing the question. So, for example, if you ask, what is your favorite color? Don't say my favorite color. Don't say blue. Say, my favorite color is blue because, or I really like the color blue because my eyes are blue and I love the sky, whatever it is, right? But you want to make sure because your voice isn't going to be there. So, you don't want to just say, like, did you have a good experience? And then the answer just be yes, like, because it would have no context. So that's the first tip. The second tip is um, there's one more question you should ask, and that is at the very end and ask them, is there anything else you'd like to add? Now, when you say that, that will actually you want to do it at the end because now they've already kind of started talking and everything. But when you do that it's going to make for a much better review. And it's going to make, it, it, it's, they're going to come up with all kinds of stuff that you didn't even think about, didn't even think to ask them. And there's times when really, like I'll take that part and that's the entire testimonial and I'll throw out everything they said before because it was so good. So um, video reviews, video reviews are very, very important and very, very powerful. Okay, now you cannot give out Starbucks gift cards or Outback gift cards or whatever to your clients to get reviews, but you can incentivize your staff. Now, again, if you remember that 200 reviews will increase your revenue by approximately 44%, that is usually a lot of money for law firms, right? So incentivize your staff to get these reviews. The problem is most people have no incentive to get to, to leave a review. There's nothing in it for them. So you have to have somebody who has some sort of skin in the game who's responsible for the reviews. So if you have a paralegal or an administrative assistant or someone like that, or even an attorney, and maybe their, their salary is, I don't know, anywhere from like 40,000 a year to like 80,000 a year. If you give them $50 or a hundred dollars for every review that they get, 
that can be a pretty significant bonus for them, which is going to motivate them to get more reviews. It's going to improve their morale. And it's also going to be a really, really good investment for your for the future of your law firm. Because while you pay them one time, that review is going to go on to make you money for years and years and years and years and years. So incentivize your staff to get reviews and it will make a huge, huge difference. Now, the next thing, let's talk about consultations. Consultations are very, very important. Um, but try rebranding consultations. Everyone... Everyone knows the TV guy, the guys on TV that say, call me today for a free consultation. So consultation usually means sales. So try to rebrand the consultation. Call it a strategy session or call it a pre-jail intervention meeting or something like that. But don't call it a, a consultation because then it sounds different than everything else. Now, the next thing is you want to send videos pre-consult. One of the coolest things that you can do is you can actually pull out your phone and record a quick video that goes to anyone that you have a consultation coming up with. So for example, let's say uh, you have a consultation, you just pull out your phone and say, hey, Mary, uh, this is attorney Bill, and I uh, just wanted to send you a quick video. I was looking through your notes and everything. I'm really looking forward to our consultation this Friday. Um, I will see you at uh, Friday at 3 p.m. Um, and make sure that when you get here, uh, you get to the front desk and you know just just let them know that you're you're, you're ready for a consultation and then I I, I I I spoke with you or something like that you know send them I don't even know exactly what you have to say but send them a customized personalized video and that will that will make that will make a huge difference right it will definitely make them uh it, what we found is it makes it much more likely that they're going to show up but it also build it starts building rapport because the first time that they see you and hear you is not at the consultation, right? Now, the other thing you can do is send testimonials pre-consult. Now, this is why video testimonials are important. Imagine that you have somebody who's coming in for a DUI and they took the breathalyzer test, right? Now, imagine you also have a testimonial from somebody who you who also took the, the breathalyzer test and you were able to beat their case. What you can do in that testimony video is say, hey, I, I saw in our notes that you took the test, the, uh, the breathalyzer test, don't worry. We've actually worked with a lot of people who have taken the breathalyzer test. In fact, I'm going to send you a video from somebody um, right after this message um, that that you can hear kind of what it was like with them. And send a testimonial video of somebody who else has like a similar situation because everyone thinks that their situation is special. You know, everybody's like, well, yeah, they're a good DUI attorney and maybe they beat somebody, they beat the the, the breath test, but I took the blood test. So it, it doesn't work for me, right? Or, oh, yeah, I took the blood, yeah, they took the blood test, but yeah, but I took, I, I did the walk and turn thing. That's, it's not going to work for me, right? So start, you have to like start collecting these testimonials and then start sending testimonials pre-consultation to people who, who've already had success with, uh, you know, with similar, with situations that are very similar to them. Now, just cause you don't have a, a dead specific one that's like right on then still send a testimonial, right? But like the more specific, the better. But if you send testimonials pre-consult, that's going to do a lot, uh, to, 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 to pre-framing and making them want to hire you. Now, Value videos. If you're creating videos on a regular basis, you should have a stockpile of videos. And when people have certain things like, you know, they like, let's go with the breathalyzer test, right? What you can do is you can send them value videos beforehand that are specific. Like you can say like three ways that, that attorneys might be able to beat a breathalyzer test or three times breathalyzer tests have been proven inadmissible in court, right? Send them this crap, especially if, it's, especially if you've done it already. If it's your videos, then what that's going to do is that's going to answer some of the questions that they already have, especially Especially when people come into your office and they ask you the same questions over and over and over again. I'm sure that you know the five questions that everyone's going to ask you when they come into your office. Well, record videos and send them to them before the, the consultation. Because what's going to happen is the more value you give them, the more, the more problems you help them solve, the more likely they are to hire you. And the more likely they are to know, like, and trust you before they even walk into the consultation. And that's the idea. You want them to have a good feeling about you and, and have rapport with you before you even really meet them, right? And when you can do that, it makes a massive difference in your bottom line. Now, the next thing is that you want to stack the benefits of the consultation. So what does that mean? That means that during a consultation, there's certain things that you're going to do, right? And it's probably the same things that your competitors do as well. But your competitors are saying, okay, we'll come in for a consultation on Friday, um, all right, we'll see you then, right? But if instead, what if you actually told them what was going to happen in the consultation and showed how it was going to benefit them? So you have DUI attorney one who says, okay, come in on Friday and bring your police report. And then you have DUI attorney two. And when I say DUI attorney, I mean the law firm. So DUI law firm two, where the, the, either the website says this or the person answering the phone says, okay, cool. So what you need to do is you need to make sure to uh, bring your police report and any other documentation that you have, because what we're going to do during this uh, during this this meeting 
is uh, the attorney is going to review your police report and he's going to thoroughly explain everything that you're charged with. He's going to let you know all the potential outcomes. So potential fines, potential jail time, potential license consequences, things like that. Um, we're going to identify any weaknesses that may be present in the prosecution's case, and then we'll c- come up with a, a really solid plan uh, for how you can attack these charges head on. Um, and then we'll answer any other questions that you have. So make sure that you uh, show up on Friday because we're going to do all that for you, right? So if you just stack the benefits, and, and the reality is that's the stuff you're going to do anyway, right? So just explain what you're going to do during the consultation, and people will be like, oh, wow, that's really valuable. And then they're much more likely to show up, and they're much more likely to hire you, right? So stack the benefits of the consultation. Um, and then the next one is you want to pre-frame your consults. Now, this is a little bit of psychological hacking that's really cool to do. If you watch speakers, like professional speakers, what happens is usually like the best speakers will always have some sort of demo reel that plays before they go up on stage. They're like, oh, he was uh, he was featured on Fox News and he's a Fortune 500 CEO and he's done all this and blah, 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 right? And the reason why is because you're pre-framing, they're trying to pre-frame the audience that this person is is amazing, right? And what's funny is that everyone in the room knows that the speaker before <laughs> 10 minutes before they went on stage went up and handed the tape or sent the file over to the, to the AV guys and just said, here, play this. Right. But now everybody looks at the, the speaker in a higher light. Right. So you can do the same thing with your, with your staff, with your consultation. So when somebody calls and they say, I got a DUI or I got a car, I got into a car accident or I found out my wife's cheating on me or whatever it is, train your staff to really edify you, like talk you up, be like, oh, wow. Well, you know what? You called the right law firm because attorney Smith, he's actually been handling DUI cases for 15 years. And like, he is the go-to guy. Like, yeah, trust me, you made a good call calling this law firm. Like just that little saying, that little phrase is going to pre-frame so much and make it so much more likely that they're going to hire you. Now, here's the thing. Yes, they know that that's the person that that you're paying that person. And there's probably a good chance that you told them to say that. But it doesn't matter and they don't care. It still puts in the fact, still puts in their brain that, oh, wow, yeah, this is, okay, good. This is, this is the person to see, right? So pre-frame your consultations. It will make a huge, huge difference. So the other thing is create custom signage whenever people come into your office. And this is for people that when they come into your office. I remember a couple of years ago, my wife and I were building a custom home. And we came into the office and there was a sign and it was just in a plastic holder. And the sign was just a piece of paper that I'm sure they printed out on the printer three minutes before we got there that said, welcome Chelsea and Andy. And my name's Andy and my wife's name is Chelsea. And that stuck out to me so much where there was actually a sign that had our name on it that said, welcome Chelsea and Andy. I don't know why that was such a big impact, but that little customization made such a big impact. So go to Staples or Office Max or wherever, get a sign holder, and then before somebody comes in, just print out, welcome Bill Smith or welcome whoever, welcome, you know, whatever it is. And that like customization makes people feel special. And when people feel special, they're much more likely to hire you, right? Now, speaking of that, give them small gifts, give them something small that they can take with them. And it can even be like, I mean, like I think at the the at the um the the, the home the, the the home builder they gave us like a, a pocket uh, like a keychain multi tool or uh, like a Swiss Army knife or something with their logo. Like, just give them something. Give them pens. Give them notebooks or like you know custom journals or something like that. Because what that's going to do is that's going to trigger reciprocity. Reciprocity is ingrained in every single one of us. It says that if I invite you to my birthday party, then you must invite me to your birthday party, right? If 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 I do something for you, now you owe me, right? Now, you don't have to say anything. Just give it to them. I mean, like, you don't have to say, okay, now you owe me. But give them, like, give them small gifts. I love giving people my books and things like that because um, it, it, it creates reciprocity and it makes it much more likely that they're going to do business with you just because of the fact that you gave them something and they feel like they owe you. So here's another thing. You can give, uh, you can give drinks and snacks and sodas and coffee and energy drinks, but definitely, definitely, definitely offer caffeine because people are much more likely to impulse buy when uh, they're drinking caffeine. So give sodas, give energy drinks, give coffee, give tea. Like think of every single possible caffeinated beverage, give those five hour energies, whatever they want, any kind of caffeinated beverage, make sure to offer it because people are more, much more likely to impulse buy with caffeine. Now, here's the other thing. Follow up with all consultations. How many times has someone left your office and they didn't hire you 
and you just never followed up with them again. Well, you need to follow up with everybody. We have a strategy that I like to teach called by the way marketing. And basically what by the way marketing is, you send somebody a text message like a day or two after they leave your office. And the format is, hey, thanks for coming in. By the way, value, right? So let me give you a perfect example. We have an attorney uh, client. His name's Lance. He does DUIs up in... um, he does DUIs up in uh, uh, Seattle. A lead came into his office, didn't hire him. So he sent a text message and he said, hey, this is attorney Lance. Thanks for coming in the other day and, and sharing your story with us. By the way, because I, by the way, I was thinking about your case and because it's in front of judge so-and-so, you should probably take this type of def- approach with your defense. That person picked up the phone and called him right there. And we have so many stories of that happening where they provide value after the fact And then because you followed up and provided custom value to them, then they are much more likely to hire you. So follow up with consults. You will make more money. If you're watching this video right now, that's something you can do right now is look at all the people in the last three weeks that didn't hire you, follow up with some sort of value. And I promise you, you'll get clients if you do this on a consistent basis. Now, the next one is create an irresistible offer. What you want to do is you want to create an offer that makes it impossible to compare you to the attorneys up the road, right? One of the easiest ways to do this is to involve your strategic partners. So again, think about what are all the problems that that your ideal clients have during your case, before their case, and after the case, right? And if you can solve them with irresistible offers, specifically with like strategic partners, that will make a huge di- huge difference. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're a family law attorney, right? Uh, one of the things that, that people who are going through a divorce worry about is what is this divorce going to do to my kids? I don't want to screw my kids up. So what if you partnered with a child psychiatrist or a child therapist um, and also a marriage therapist or just any kind of therapist? And you said, listen, um, when you sign up with us, uh, we, we're a full lifestyle. Like we're, our, our goal here is to give you a new life. It's not just to just to, to deliver a divorce, right? So when you sign up with us, we actually have a partnership with uh, this, this family therapist and you're going to get two free sessions uh, for you. So you actually have somebody to talk to. You're also going to need two free sessions for your kids, right? Now, behind the scenes, that therapist has agreed to comp two free sessions so that eventually they go, somebody goes, and then they're probably going to have a decent number of people that after two sessions, they're going to keep going. And then the therapist can make money. It's essentially a free trial, right? And behind the scenes also, the therapist has also agreed to send anyone who needs a divorce to recommend you, right? And you make that part of your offer. So now your offer is getting enhanced and you're providing value to a therapist who is uh, then sending you more leads, leads your way. So you can do that by making a better offer because one now, not only do they get an attorney, but they also get a therapist and you're also getting, so you're getting more clients that way. And then you're also going to uh, get more leads from the therapist. And you can do this many different times, say like a personal trainer, like most people when they, they want that revenge body, right? So what if you work with a gym or you work with a, a personal training studio or something like that? So not only that, you're also going to get two free sessions with uh, this personal trainer here. And, you know, that way you can start getting back in, you get back in health, getting your, your health back in order and all that type of stuff. Right. And when you actually create all, like, think about what are all the problems and what are all the services and then find strategic partners that you can make part of your offer so that when they hire you, not only do they get the, the, the attorney, not only do they get the divorce and all that type of stuff, but you're creating a new life for them and you're creating, you know, they're going to get the therapy. They're going to get back in shape. Maybe you can do like a meal prep. I mean, there's so many different things like the, the, the possibilities are endless. But when you do that and you stack it all on your offer, then it becomes something where they can't get other attorneys can't compete with that. With them, they just get the attorney with you. They get all this other stuff, right? They get all this other stuff that is, is ultimately going to, again, remember back to the airplane test, all this stuff that is going to take them to the resort. That's all pieces of getting them to the resort. You don't want to do it with just random stuff. Don't just be like, yeah, do this. And we're going to send you, we'll give you a Home Depot gift card. You know, like, I mean, it's like, I, I, you know, you just want to make sure that it makes sense because you can, if you do this, then it, it, it makes a huge, huge difference for you. The other thing is create a premium value offer. Let's say you're a divorce attorney and your main, uh, your first offer is, you know, your, your $5,000, right? Think about what could you do? Like, let's say you charge $20,000 for a divorce. What, how would you serve your clients differently? How would you be able to serve your clients better if you did a $20,000 divorce, right? What would you be able to do? And then offer a $20,000 divorce. Because here's the thing. Most people will not take you up on that $20,000 divorce. But what that does is two things. First of all, 
there are a select number of people that will take you up on a $20,000 divorce because when you get on an airplane, there's 12 first class seats and then there's a bunch of coach seats. There are people that will pay for a premium value offer. So you'll make more money just by having a premium value offer. But then what happens is the $5,000 divorce is actually not going to seem that expensive anymore because you've already price anchored them with a $20,000 divorce. So, you know, we have the, we have the platinum $20,000 divorce. Is this and this and this and this. Say, oh, that's too much money. Okay, well, we do have the, the $5,000, the gold package. You know what I mean? Now, $5,000 doesn't seem that much because they were just thinking about $20,000, right? So the premium value offer will make you more money two ways. One, you'll get people. You'll be surprised at how many people will actually take you up on the premium value offer. And then two, you'll be surprised at how many more people now hire you at the $5,000 level because $5,000 does not seem nearly as bad as $20,000. And again, include partners in your offer. We already talked about this one. Um, now, the other thing you can do is you can advertise on local Instagram and Facebook groups. Now, what's cool is that if you go to Instagram or you go to Facebook, uh, so Instagram pages and Facebook groups. So if you go to Instagram pages and let's say you live in Chicago, just type Chicago, and you'll see all these different pages that are all specific to Chicago. And if you go into Facebook and, and type Chicago and type groups, you'll see all these different pages that are all relevant to groups. So all you have to do is reach out to the admins of these pages. Now, most of them have no idea what they're sitting on, right? But what you have is you have a large group of people who usually it's, I mean, there's sometimes, there's sometimes, you know, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of people in these people in these groups. And you can reach their audiences sometimes for like $100, $150 to get in front of like 100,000 people. It's insane. So what you want to do is just go in there and start start offering value, right? Don't just go and start selling, but go in and start offering value and start trying to own the traffic. So what you're doing again, like we said before, three types of traffic, traffic you control, traffic you don't control, traffic that you own. So create some sort of lead magnet. Think about Okay, what's the purpose of the group? How can I relate what I do to the group? And what's the value that I can provide them in a lead magnet? And then I say, hey, do you have this problem? Well, here, download this cheat sheet. It'll help you solve that problem. And now you've got all the people in the group. Now on your email list, you can start following up with over and over and over again. And you can do this over and over and over again with local Facebook groups, uh, local Instagram pages. It's really, really, really amazing. Now, the next thing you can do is promotional items. Use promotional items. But the thing I like about promotional, the thing about promotional items is you have to have promotional items that people will actually use. Like, I hate koo. Well, I, I hate koozies and I hate like uh, what are they called? Stress balls and things like because people just look at them and they see them and they just throw them away, right? So try to figure out promotional items that people will actually use, like T-shirts, for example. If you're going to do T-shirts, make sure you get the most comfortable T-shirts that you've ever seen. Yes, it will cost you more money, but people will actually wear them. I love a comfortable T-shirt. Everybody loves comfortable T-shirts, right? So don't get crappy T-shirts. Get really nice T-shirts. And think about like, what is practical? What will people hang on to? We had a client, he's a criminal offense attorney and he wanted to get DUIs. So I told him to go out and buy a bunch of lighters um, and get his name and phone number printed on them and just go down to bars and just pass them out to the bartenders and be like, here, here's a box of lighters. Just give them out to the people that are um, that come to the bar. And he had bartenders that were just distributing free lighters that had his name and phone number on them. And he ended up getting several clients out of that deal right? Because he actually gave something out that people were going to hang on to, something that had utility. So think about with promotional items, don't just give away something just to give it away. Think about what's something that people are actually going to use that they're actually going to hang on to that will make sure that you get as much mileage out of that promotional item as possible. And that, my friends, is 50 law firm marketing tips that you can use today. If you have any questions about any of these, please feel free to email me, andy at smbteam.com. And I hope you found some value in these. And please let me know if you use any of these tips and they work for you, please let me know as well. So have a great day and we will talk to you soon.